Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. So I hope everyone is doing well. And uh, for today's episode, I am going to share the differentiated instructions topic, which is also uh, requested by most of the teacher viewers. So in this uh, topic, teachers will be reminded that when we are creating a lesson, that lesson doesn't suit, especially if it is just one um, strategy for all. We need to be reminded, just like clothes, sometimes one size doesn't fit all. So are you ready? Let's begin. So in, in making sure that we differentiated instructions, it is important for us teachers to understand the different learning style of our students. So this is kind of the core of our discussion for this episode, understanding the learning style of each individual student. So no two persons are alike. So every individual is unique. And we all know that as a teacher. And that's why uh, I always admire teachers because if you have 40 students or 30 students in your classroom, it means you need to deal with those 40 or 30 students differently. So that's quite a challenge for all us uh, teachers. We need to understand individual students in different aspects. So kudos to all of you teachers. Why do we need to differentiate instructions? So we need to be remembered or reminded that uh, every individual has a strength and every individual as well has its area that needs improvement. So there are uh, students that are fast learners, there are students that, uh, you know, really need a lot of time to understand the lesson. And as we all know, each person's fingerprint is different. So as the brain and all students can learn, but students can learn in different ways at different times. So those are something to remember why we need to differentiate our instructions in the classroom. So first is, as a teacher, in order to create a differentiated instruction, you need to know the learner or you need to know your learners. How do you do that? So you need to use certain tool like assessment. And there are some inventories like interest inventories that are, you can just download in the internet or those are, uh, you can even make your own inventory of skills or inventory of interest. And another strategy to know your learner is through classroom observation. You need to observe each individual, their interest, their weakness, their strength, what makes them learn fast or what is uh, quite challenging for them and all of, and all of those uh, observation that you need to do. And at times, if you want to make an intensive evaluation, you can request for psychoeducational evaluation. So that is really very intensive. And you can also interview your students, you know, talking to them. Sometimes uh, if they don't really talk in the classroom or recite that often, especially those that are uh, quite timid in terms of their personality, there are so many exciting or uh, interesting that we need to find out uh, with our students. And also creating daily logs and journals, especially if you have a lot of kids in your classroom, taking down notes of your observation, of your documentation, uh, it will help you know your learner, okay? So those are just some strategies that you can implement in knowing your students. And when we talk about uh, differentiated instruction, it reminds us about the theory um, presented by Howard Gardner's 
in the early 90s, I guess. So this is the multiple intelligence theory. And according to Howard Gardner, students or kids have different uh, areas of interest or intelligence. And um, these are the different intelligence that uh, he proposed in his theory. Some kids are inclined to music, some are bodily kinesthetic or spatial, interpersonal, interpersonal, linguistic, logical, mathematical, and some are naturalist. So these are the different uh, multiple intelligence where you can also relate how you prepare your lesson or how you differentiate your lesson in the classroom. So the first one, if your student is inclined to linguistic or what we call the word smart kids, you can um, develop some lessons in order to utilize that strength by making them you know, write, um, create a report. This involves words and sentence and paragraph, and they can explain whether verbally or written they can describe things, they can describe. So you, you give a lot of description in your lesson, especially if you want to focus on the students in the area of uh, linguistic. And they can also participate in the discussion interview and they can summarize lessons. So those are some approach that you can do for the group of your students that are inclined to linguistic or they are word smart. And then the next one is, what about the students that are inclined to mathematics or logical? So these are the students uh, who learn best through numbers, reasoning, and problem solving. And they are able to create, manipulate visuals and create mental pictures from many perspectives. So some um, activities that you can do for them is make them use the graphic organizer because they can, you know, analyze those um, reason, uh, they can give reasoning to those graphic organizer. They can work with puzzles, they can do debates, critical thinking analysis and uh, graphs and charts. And even uh, you make them analyze uh, some data and statistics. So this is some kind of uh, the approach that you can use for students that are inclined to logical, mathematical, okay? So the other um, intelligence area is the visual spatial, or they call them the picture smart. And some activities that you can give to this uh, group of students can be, you know, drawing, creating, like doing projects through creating, visualize, uh, paint, imagine, create models. They can even um, do some kind of brochures molding clay, photography, sculpture, and so on. Everything that is pertaining to visual spatial. So these students can express their learning by using this kind of approach. So imagine your students, uh, you have one topic, you are talking about, let's say the life cycle. One group will do more of writing, and summarizing and evaluating. Others will do some kind of graphs and data, and some will do this kind of uh, visual spatial. But you are all arriving in the same objective, but the approach is different, okay? Another uh, area of intelligence that you need to consider in uh, creating your lesson or differentiating your lesson are the kids that are inclined to music the musical intelligence. So you have to give them some kind of lesson or activities where they can integrate the singing, they can rap, they can beat with the rhythm, they can create poetry or limericks and all that. So that will be the activities that you can prepare for them. What about the students that are inclined to bodily kinesthetic or the body smart? Okay, these are the kids that really loves to move, the sports minded or the athletic people. 
they love to jump and play and be everywhere. So you can make them perform, you know, like uh, a little uh, mini theater where they can perform, they can create, they can construct, develop, manipulate, they can do their dance, move, you know, things like that. We need to tap their areas of strength and their interests whenever we create our lesson. So we don't hear students saying, teacher, it's boring, you know, their favorite word. So let's challenge our students and address the areas where they learn better. And what about the students that are intrapersonal? These are the quiet students, you know, that they just wanted to study on their own, uh, thinking on their own, you know, they don't work well with group or paired learning. So these, these kids, they exceed or uh, show their strength by being alone, by thinking by themselves, you know, give them time to think and work on their own. So you can give them some kind of activities like observation and then they need to log it in their journal and they can do independent study and they can even uh, formulate their own goal and where they want what they want to achieve and all that they can work on their autobiography and they can also create personal questions with regard to the lesson and at the same time uh, generate answer you know with that so Things like that. We, we have to do a lot of research in order to address the interests of our students. So the other one is the interpersonal, which is the opposite. Like these are the kids that love to be with the group, that love to, they love to work with their peers, okay? So what, what kind of activities you can give to this uh, group of students? You can give them some group work, you know, like they have to uh, think together, generate ideas together, or some partner activities, reciprocal teaching, peer reading, and they can even edit, like edit each other's work, you know? They can do role playing, class meetings, and even conferencing and sharing, because they love to interact. They love to work and learn with their peers. So those are the students with interpersonal intelligence. And um, there are also kids that are inclined to nature. And these are the naturalistic intelligence. So these students, uh, they are like the little scientists. So you can give them some work or activities where they will investigate, they classify, they sort, they analyze, they identify, categorize, like, you know, you can bring them outside and make them, you know, collect things and classify them and uh, talk about it and so on and so forth because they are naturalistic or nature smart, okay? So those are the different approach for differentiated instruction. In order to create a fun activity in the classroom, you need to create different lessons, different approach for certain groups of students. You don't have to do it all those intelligences at once in one day, you know? You just need to schedule them during the week and kind of divide your activities and involve your students in planning. And uh, sometimes you just present to them, this is our topic for next week. What do you think are the best uh, strategies that we can do to address this topic? So things like that. So the differentiated instruction is a must for teachers. I know it, it's a lot of work for teachers, but it also create a positive result if we try to start doing that practice in our instructions because kids, students learn differently. Each student is unique, okay? So thank you for now. If you have questions, don't forget to comment down below. And you can also suggest some topics that we can 
discuss next time. And I hope you are learning from this discussion. And uh, for those uh, new viewers, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get notification for the future video, okay? And thank you for now. Have a wonderful day and to God be the glory. See you on the next episode. Thank you and bye.